Hello, I'm Paul. I'm Adam. And I'm Ben. And welcome to the Film Busters Podcast. The film show with no filters, no prisoners taken, loads of disagreements, but one hell of a love for cinema. If you want to hear three friends ridiculing each other for an hour or so regarding their taste in films, then you have come to the right place. In each episode, one of the team picks a film for us to discuss. It could be anything from a recent cinema release to an all-time classic. So, strap in and get ready to get mad or get vindicated as we guide you through the murky world of being a film geek. If you like what you hear, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram using at FilmBustersPod. You can also find each of our individual accounts. I'm at FilmBustersPaul. I'm at FilmBustersAdam. And I'm at FilmBustersBen. If you want to use your eyes instead of your ears, you can also visit the website at filmbusterspod.co.uk. And if busting makes you feel good, you can also support us at patreon.com forward slash filmbusters for exclusive content. Or shoot over and get some groovy merchandise at society6.com forward slash filmbusters. All right, can we just get on with this now, please? Filmbusters. Well, it seems like we've spoken about this in the last couple of episodes, but on Power of the Dog, let's Mm -hmm. just talk very quickly about sam elliott have you heard about his comments mm. oh i haven't actually no was it this the one when he was saying she can't direct a film because she's not from the west or something like that yeah and also saying oh, all these homosexual undertones in the, in the film uh, took the piss out of me like basically i never knew that he was such a dickhead so i only really know him from big lebowski as the cowboy yeah. dude mm. But then I know that he was in Star is Born, which I haven't seen, and he got all the plaudits. I just thought, oh, he seems like a cool dude. But then I listened to his fucking segment on Mark Moran's podcast, and Mark Moran says, oh, Powder Dog, have you seen that? And he says, um, oh, you want to talk about that piece of shit movie? Oh. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you didn't okay. like it? And he's like, let me tell you what I thought about it. Why the fuck would you get a woman from New Zealand to direct a movie is about this Sa- Is this Sam Elliott, or is it Sylvester Stallone? I know. <laughs> But, mate, if you listen to the audio, he sounds so southern. I've never heard him say so It's almost like he's a yeah, He's trying on. to get his point across. But then but I, think I, he's, I saw yeah, someone tweet back to him just with a picture of, um, what's his name? Sergio Leone. Just like, this guy's from Italy and he directed the best westerns that anyone's ever done. Yeah, well, exactly. But it's not even that. It's not even like him going, oh, it's, it shouldn't be an American who's doing it. He's like, oh, the, well... There's all these homosexual cowboys. He's basically showing himself up to be a massive Do you homophobe. Have ever seen Brokeback Mountain? He's seen. I saw a thing on Twitter that was funny where someone said, "This is the version of Brokeback Mountain that uh, Sam Elliott watched," and it was the edited covers that were released in Japan, I think, which showed Gyllenhaal with his wife and uh, <laughs> Ledger with his wife. <laughs> But yeah, what a dickhead, man. It's like, oh, disappointing. I didn't really care for you that much anyway. So man, that's disappointing. It feels such an old-fashioned view. And so stereotypical was like, the guy who's in loads of cowboy films hates the gay portrayal of the cowboy. I also, um, I, I don't know if having this conversation is a, a massive spoiler for the film. I don't even know. Is it? N- uh, neither do I. <laughs> so I guess it isn't because... You've seen the film. Yeah, I know. I know. But it's like... I don't think there was that many of what There's some kind of about. twist ending where one of them's homosexual. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't know. <laughs> well, I mean, well, let's stop talking about it so as not to spoil it for anyone. But anyway, Sam Elliott, disappointing. Should we talk about something more impressive instead? Have you got anything nice to talk about? Well, Instead of people hating on stuff? Not me. I don't know. I was on another podcast, guys, if anyone oh, yes. wants to listen to that. Ooh, tell tell everyone about what happened. What was it? So I went on a podcast called After the Kids Go Down. Um, with their the host. sun go down on me? Nope, I didn't. And if you get the... We're not going to go on about songs with the word sun in it, are we, Ben? After no, your no. cock up last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, well, bad I knew that song was, didn't sound like a Eurovision song. It I'm was walking on Euro- sunshine. Oh, well, I, I don't know, but I apologise for my 1997 trivia. <laughs> Yeah, so I went on with the, After the Kids Go Down and we spoke about After Hours, the Martin Scorsese film. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful discussion. Um, and that podcast won't act. They think they told me it's going to be out end of April. So you've got a while to wait. They like recording a lot in the bag. They're not like us. They said yeah. to us they have like four or five podcasts in the bag at any time. That is impressive. 
I'm like, it wow. is impressive. People sometimes people do it on a schedule. When I did those with the, the guys that I did um, Notting Hill with, like they recorded the entire season first, and then they edit it and release. They're doing a whole series on Martin Scorsese, and they're going through his films in I think it's chronological order. Um, I don't think they do it every film, but they're selecting milestones throughout. I listened to it, and they invited me along, and I chose After Hours. I'm oh. very looking forward to it because I haven't actually seen After Hours, so I need to get that in the bag first oh, before yes. I actually listen. So I'm very excited for yes. both. Yes, I'm I... excited. Our little baby boy flew the nest. Yes, Aww. I know it was my first ever feature by myself. I was very nervous. Let's hope he took flight in that episode. Yeah, I, I hope he flew like a a robin. <laughs> I had to kind of remember remind myself that I wasn't talking to you two, and I can't be my normal self in this podcast. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. It's funny when you get. I, I know some of our listeners are po- uh, podcasters as well, but I think everyone pretty. Much, whenever I've heard other people guesting on other people's podcasts, everyone still sounds exactly like themselves. I think the only difference is for, with us, there is a fair amount of piss taking, and you can't really do that. With yeah, <laughs> yeah. Other podcasters, you can't. <laughs> We've got to be more out. mature. A bit more yes. mature. Yes. And also, some other great news that I found out earlier is that our favourite film at the moment, Boiling Point, is coming to Netflix on the 23rd of March. It is, Ooh. yes, yes. Which is very exciting news. I get to watch it finally. So mm. good job they didn't make that available on Blu-ray and I bought it for you then, Paul, because that was what I was considering. That would have been a oh, waste of money yeah. immediately. Well, I mean, it's, oh, it's still a film that you'd want to own. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, because uh, no, you, would, you would have access to it a month later because June's not going to be free to watch for a long time, is it? Yeah, but... I like to own even films on Netflix. I yeah. like to own. So oh, well, that's fine. I'm, I might give it an 11 out of 10. Only if it's a 10, though. No, or, or a 9. 9 or a 10. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, you have you got any eights in your still book collection, Paul? I have. Like, I've got some sequels. Like, yeah, but I mean standalone eights, like films that you're like, really oh, no, on the no. cusp. No standalones. It's part of a series. I keep. I have eights. Uh, this is the choice that Paul makes. Paul uh, makes the choice to make and purchase still books rather than pay a little more for his house so he can live near me. <laughs> <laughs> that is the choice I made. Do you reckon it's a one or the other? There, ben? Do you reckon it might be a, oh, I don't have to live near Ben here? I don't believe and in coincidences. I don't believe in them. <laughs> I love that was the deciding factor. Yes. <laughs> I need those still books. Still yes. booking across the universe. Um, uh, Should we talk about our patrons? Yeah. Yes. Well, everyone, we also have a Patreon channel at www.patreon.com forward slash filmbusters. We have exclusive content, exclusive episodes. Our patrons, they can suggest films for us to review. They can get some fun monthly roundups that we do. It's all very lovely over there. What are we doing on the Patreon today after this episode? We are talking about our favourite comedies from the noughties. That's right. Very, very naughty. I also don't have my list yet. Well, you better start <laughs> thinking. That topic brought to us by uh, Nerd Revert, who picked our last episode, which uh, kicked off 1997, which yes. was the game, of course. Yes. Uh, hopefully you've all heard that and are ready for the second chapter in the 1997 Odyssey. Which is getting a lot, it's getting a lot of... Um, Interaction, isn't it? This this film we're doing today. Oh, very much so. Honestly, can't think of a film that we've had this many comments about on Twitter. But before we move on to that that film, which we we go unmentioned, even though you clicked on the episode and know exactly what it is. Yeah. First of all, let's just say we have our wonderful patrons. First of all, we have the wonderful, very new patron, Jason Clarkson, is with us. Yes, yes, only a week old out of the womb in mm. the world of film busters <laughs> patrons. <laughs> Um, we also have Luke Human, who is a well-established patron now. Yes, we also have Steve from Movie Drone. And we have Katie and OT. They're from Australia. Yes, they are. And we have from Texas, we have Julio. Oh, yes. We have Sean Panda Nicholson, too. He's a Scottish, just like Jamie Russell, our other patron. Jamie Russell, yeah, he's also Scottish. He's McDuck. He is yes. um, uh, Macbeth. He's Macduff. He's William Wallace. Is it William Wallace? Yeah, it's William Wallace. Some also said that he was the one who placed the haggis in the back of the game. Oh, well, <laughs> look at it. The Scots are all over the place. They're all over our patron. I think this is a Scottish production now. I don't think this is an English show anymore. 
<laughs> well, we have Fiona Stewart. Where's she from? I don't know where she's from. She's from, from the, the bottom of Phoenix, Joaquin land. Phoenix. Oh yes, she sounds. She sounds very Scottish. Yes, Fiona Stewart. Yeah. Just because I'm thinking of Shrek. <laughs> I was thinking of more of Jackie Stewart, but yeah. And then we have the wonderful patron who suggested the last episode, Nerd Revert. And finally, we have Philip Barantini, director of Boiling Points. Thank you all. I would love to go out for dinner with every single one of them. Oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine such a thing? Us at the dinner with all of our patrons. Mm. Oh, well, we'd be at the head of the table. We would have to do it in more of a like a pub situation, I think, where we can move around. Well, hang on now, Adam. King of the food uh, synonyms, analogies, etc. If we had to serve the first main and dessert, what would you serve all of those patrons? Starter, main, and dessert. Oh, you have to. Go, I don't know. No, say forget pa- forget veggies. Imagine there's no veggies. Okay. <laughs> Just free reign on the meats, please. <laughs> One of our own actual. Film Busters is a vegetarian. I know, but I'm discounting him too. He's not allowed to come, is he? He's too far away. I just won't show up. He can, yeah. eat, he can eat the dessert. The dessert He's is fine for a vegetarian. He's just as close to me and you, Ben, as Katie and OTR in Australia. There we go. He's from Scotland he's himself. There you go. It is a Scottish <laughs> I'm production. third Scot. Mm. Uh, come on, what food are we serving, Adam? I don't know. You have to go for people pleasers, really, don't you? I don't know what people's palates are like there. I know. I reckon you go safe with a uh, burrata bit of... Buffalo, Barata, mozzarella, a bit of parma ham, a bit yeah. of rocket, a bit yeah, of vinaigrette yeah, yeah. on it. Oh, that's delicious. All right, there we go. Starter. Main? Well, if we're going that, I think we keep it Italian. All right. In what way? What 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 dish? I'll go pasta. You can serve it up easy. Yes, all right, mate. But, but let's have be a, a bit more nuanced. Parmigiana um, with a bit of aubergine. Maybe a bit of ravioli, it. let's say. Some nice yeah, but spinach what? and ricotta ravioli. Oh, spinach and ricotta. So you've gone vegetarian. Well, I didn't. He's, 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 he's got me in mind, see? Yeah, we got right. to have one. All right, we'll, we'll give you we'll give you that then. Well, you since can have a chicken and bacon starter, one as well. That's then. fine. Okay, spinach and ricotta main. How do you patrons feel about that? I think that, I don't think a lot of patrons are going to like spinach and ricotta ravioli. Oh, it's the best and, ravioli uh, in town. And before we actually get on with what the fuck we're here to do, shall we talk about <laughs> what dessert they'll be served? <laughs> tiramisu. <laughs> tiramisu, mate. I'm leaving. I'm not turning. I'm up. leaving. Yeah, <laughs> tiramisu is a horrible like dessert. Tiramisu. So All the overrated. patrons have left. Yeah. What about a big chocolate cake? Adam, you're you're so uninspired with your dinner choices, mate. Well, I just had tiramisu, which I think is a fairly people pleaser, but still got flavour to it, and everyone's kicked off and left. The only thing that Adam's ever cooked for me and Paul, because we were both there, was <laughs> a half cooked egg in the middle of a rolled up pancake out of a packet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, bit, I moved into my house about a week. And I didn't really plan for you to stay over, even though I knew you were staying over. I think you did. I think you knew very well we were staying over. You just didn't care. All I had in the cupboard was that. And I was like, eh. The cupboard. One egg. <laughs> one egg <laughs> one in egg. the cupboard. Three yeah. rolled up pancakes. Well, pre-rolled. there were three of us, so there was an egg each. <laughs> oh, mate. It was a terrible Funny. time. I do okay. Admit. It was a terrible. <laughs> what beer would you put on the table, Ben? <laughs> well, a, a Pilsner. Since it's Italian and you w- w- don't want anything that's going to blow anyone's mind, I'd go with like a, a nice crisp Pilsner. Killer Pils from Lost nice table beer. Yeah. Table beer would do well from the Colonel. Okay, there we go. What's Paul, what's Paul providing? He's got to do the red wine, surely. Jam shed. Yes, oh, yeah. I'll give a bit of jam shed. That's a very nice wine. And okay. uh, we'll see you soon for that meal, patrons. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, everyone else who we've bored to tears. <laughs> we are going to talk about Batman and Robin. Come on, should we do the quiz? Right, let's get right to it. Yes. We haven't even said what film we're doing. Okay, set it up. We. We're doing 1997's <laughs> Batman and Robin. Robin. <laughs> Batman and Robin. Robin, with a G at the end. Brought to us by our, our, our very good host, Adam. It's his pick this week. And that's all I've got to say about that. Yes. Right, yeah. So, we're going to talk about Batman and Robin. Um, and uh, before we do that, we're going to do the usual thing, which is me fire a couple of questions at the boys and see yes. how much attention they were paying in this film. I think... Both of you have an equal chance of getting these questions because I don't think Paul's knowledge of DC or Batman bears any weight on this, although it might do because the first question may have significance. So, boys, your first Batman and Robin question. Here we go. Are you listening? Be quick. I'm listening. What has replaced Poison Ivy's blood? Aloe. Fucking hell, that is good, That is a good case. Like, is that in aloe vera? (laughs) 
yeah, yeah. Aloeburia. I don't think that's good for you. That's, that's, I don't think that's canon. I think that's just something Uma Thurman says. <laughs> you actually remembered that. Well <laughs> yes, done. I that's did. very good. Fucking hell. Paul's running Alo- away. Chlor- chlorophyll. Is it is aloe? Is it? I thought aloe vera Paul's, was good. Paul's going to list everything. Aloe vera is good for you, Adam. You put it on burns and such, but yeah. mm. it's what's replaced her blood because she's turned into a plant of yeah, sorts. Yeah, but surely she would be good at like fixing burns and stuff. They should get it down the hospital. Well, she, well, she might be, but Mr. Freeze was also good at fixing burns. Yeah, she, that's other, the she has burn. other plans. She likes yes, to, to go down the hospital. Well, anyway, listen, uh, Paul got that point. We didn't even say what points uh, the boys were on, but we'll do it after this. Second People question. Know. We'll wrap it up at the end. This is um, the last one, and then add a couple of one. I would like... I'm going to give you both a chance to answer, so it's not about who beats who, okay? Okay. So, uh, how are we going to do it? Who speaks first? Okay, I want to know the first ice-cold freeze-related pun that Arnold Schwarzenegger says in this movie. Oh, shit. There's two options, because one might be considered not to necessarily be a pun. So, you have two options. I'll let you each take a guess. Um, it's when he breaks into the church or the museum at the beginning, obviously. And yes. I'm going to say... By the way, you can't both have the same answer. So if Adam says one first, Paul, you can't oh. have it. Okay. Go on. He says something about... What's that line that Ben keeps repeating? I think that is the first one, isn't it? No, it's not. Wait, there, it's not. Didn't he say something like everybody freeze and then he starts freezing all the policemen? All right, you lock in that one. That's yours, is it? Everybody yeah. freeze. Okay, Paul. Is it is it like the uh, the the Ice Man cometh or something? The ice the Ice Man cometh. That's afterwards. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Never doubt this guy's ability to uh, answer fucking questions about Batman or DC or anything. Is that was it? a tricky question, and that is the first pun. That really? Mr. Freeze says, the Iceman... Oh, it is me. I thought it was Adam. No. <laughs> Are you sure? Because it was that, like, oh, I swear he did that when he was like, had a gun against someone's neck. When he first frozen arrives, somebody. is the Iceman cometh. That's the first first pun. It's not even a pun, is it? <laughs> well, it's the name of a play. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's the name of a play. So he's, he's just repeating it. But But like I said, in the event that there was any debate about whether or not that was a pun, there was a second... There's a second line that he says, which uh, anyone want to take a guess for a bonus point? Nah. It's neither of the ones that you said. I'll just tell um, you. It's, it's the one you the one you always say. No, it's not. You would think is so. It, it is early in the film, though, but it's not. No, the second thing is, he says, I'm afraid my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Mr. Freeze, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what does that do to the school board? Paul gets so, two points. Yes, Fucking I get hell. two points. Ben, you're on three points. Adam, you're on two points. And I'm now on nine points. Jesus, this is unprecedented. No one's run away with it this far, this soon. Well, are my I questions not tough easy. enough? What's going on here? I don't know. It's Batman, you know. Maybe I do need to be tougher. Maybe you. Maybe I need to be tougher. Why don't no. you just tell me the answers for next week, Ben? All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the answers for next week's. <laughs> that's how. That's how you win. Yeah. This is how I win. <laughs> next week's is also a Batman <laughs> film, though, so I don't fancy your chances. Even if I told you the answers, Paul would get it. <laughs> It'll be harder though, because I would have only seen the film once, where I've seen this one many times. Everybody, chill. 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 Cool off, bird boy. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do this damn film? Let's do Batman and Robin. <laughs> and you are poison. Poison Ivy. <gasps> mm. Why not send Junior home early? I've got some wild oats to sow. On the other hand, youth does have its advantages. Endurance, stamina. Forget the geriatric bat. Come join me. My garden needs tending. I'll take it from here, pal. Wouldn't you like the earrings too? Some lucky boy's about to hit the honeypot. I'll include an evening of my company 
for the winner. I'll bring everything you see here, plus everything you don't. <laughs> I bet fifty thousand dollars for poison ivy. A hundred thousand. One million dollars. Two million. You don't have it. Three million. I'll borrow it from you. Four million. Five million. That's a utility belt, not a money belt. Six million. Seven million. <laughs> Never leave the cave without it. You two boys aren't gonna start fighting over little old me now, are you? Right, everyone, today we are doing Batman and Robin from 1997 by Joel Schumacher. This yeah. is a spoiler episode, so if you've not seen the film, just maybe just just let us, us spoil it for you or something. Well, but I think you should I think you should experience this at least once this film, maybe? Yes. It's, yep. it's, a, it's an entertaining somewhat, I think, without spoiling anything. Let's talk about what actors we have done before in other films. Of course, this is a return. For Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's he's been very recently in Predator, but he's also been in Terminator. What one was it? Genesis. Uh, Dark, Dark Fate. Fate. Dark yeah. Fate. Terminator Dark Fate. But we've also got a return for Mr. George Clooney. What film was it, guys? Oh, um, Burn After oh, Reading. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Burn After Reading. This one's a little bit trickier. We'll get we've a point for that. Got, we've also got Uma Thurman. Uh, House of Jack Bill. Yeah, I thought that was trickier. I just remembered her from the beginning. This one is very... I, I don't even know where, the, where she shows up, but Alicia Silverstone as well. This is her second time coming Oh, really? Podcast. Is it? Yeah. Clueless? We haven't we done, haven't done Clueless. Clueless. What world are you in? <laughs> Adam's in Clueless. <laughs> Fucking Alicia Silverstone in another movie we've done. Yeah. Well, oh, mate. I really fancied her when I was young. From Clueless? No. You still not now, From though? Hideaway. No, she oh, is, she is very attractive. She is. Mm. Yeah, I still fancy her. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. What? Remember in, in that? Capacity? I don't know. Is she a doctor know. in it? A little should bit I, older. Should I find out what, she, what her character name is? Yes. Uh, where is her name? It says her name's... Oh, she's yeah. Martin's mother. Who's Martin? Oh, the Martin oh. is Barry Ke Keegan. Oh dear, she's that means she's got an old. Hmm. Mm. Well, she is old. She's well, no, she's not old. She's older than she was, of course. Hmm. Born in well. 1976. Well, look at that. Thanks, Alicia. I'm and sorry. Then, to have not it's noticed. not even stopping there. We're not even stopping there. Oh right. Michael Goff is also in another film we've done. Oh, who's <laughs> that? Well, he's in every <laughs> bloody Batman film, but we ain't done any others. <laughs> No, um, this is a we we didn't do this that long ago, and it is a one brought up by one of our patrons, and they actually appeared on the show as well. Age of Innocence. Was, oh yeah, it must be. Yes, it was Age of Innocence. Of course, it was. And oh. lastly, who was he in Age of Innocence? Just a small role. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, he was one of the bigwigs of the family uh, yes. circuit. He he was yes. the patriarch of the family. Yes, he was. And last hmm. of all, this one's not a guesser, but John Glover, who plays the scientist who. Uh, Poison Ivy kills right at the beginning. He was also in Shazam. Oh. I, I think he was the dad, actually. He was the dad in Shazam. That is who he was. I pay just, that, pay that no mind. Yes, but it's, we don't need to worry about that. This guy only does DC. Yes. Shall we move on to Adam? Do you want to uh, tell us what the plot of this film is? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the plot of this one um, is you've got Batman. You've got his little sidekick, Robin. Um, and then they're against Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy, who are trying to take over the world. Mr. Freeze is trying to make it all icy, so him and his wife can live happily. And Poison nice Ivy, to see you. Uh, Poison Ivy wants to cover it in Venus flytraps and spend <laughs> her time with Mr. Freeze. And there's a couple of other Batman characters knocking around in. They've got Bane knocking around in there. You have obviously Alfred. You've got Batgirl. Is it Batgirl, Batwoman? It's Batgirl. What's the difference? Batwoman's a totally different character. Bat is Batwoman is Batgirl's mum. That's Kate Kane. Okay. God. Named after Bob Kane, the creator. 
Well, I'm Michael Caine, who plays Alfred. <laughs> yes. Michael Caine. Loads of Canes. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Batman has taken down Mr. Freeze to save the world and Gotham City. Spoilers. Mmm. So, there you go. Uh, only a little bit of trivia for you. This is the fourth and final instalment in the Warner Brothers initial Batman film series, following terms from Michael Keaton in the first two Batman films and Val Kilmer in the third. It was directed by Joel Schumacher, written by Akiva Goldsmith, and the two came up for the idea while they were working on pre-production for A Time to Kill, which I can only imagine is one of the worst Bond films as well. Presumably. A Time to Kill. Maybe. A Time to Kill is... Uh, not a Bond film, isn't it's it? A, it's, it's, it's Samuel Jackson, isn't it? Oh man, surely not. Because if that's the no, surely not. I yeah, thought it was a Bond, it's film. Not a Bond film. A Time to Kill with Samuel Jackson and Matthew McConaughey is a good film. And I saw that the writer Akiva Goldsmith was like nominated for a Razzie for the screenplay of A Time to Kill. How on earth is that the case? That can't be because that's a really good film. Anyway, I, I haven't seen it, so I couldn't say. There's always problems with my trivia, folks, so anything that I say here, please do, feel free to you're disregard. Probably, you're probably thinking of A View to a Kill. Matthew McConaughey, Samuel Jackson, Kevin Spacey, Sandra Bullock. Well, who wrote it, Adam, now that you've got it up? Does it say Akiva Goldsmith? Yeah. And John oh, Grisham. Well, it's well that's a mad that that got a Razzie for, for worst screenplay. Anyway, we move on. Um, this film was a huge, huge box office disappointment and uh, turns up on many worst films ever made lists. Yes. Uh, due to the poor performance of the film, Schumacher's planned Batman Unchained film, which I believe was going to continue the universe, was scrapped altogether until the series was rebooted by Warner Brothers in 2005 with Nolan's Batman Begins. And George Clooney is apparently so ashamed of the film that if he ever meets you and you tell him that you bought a ticket to the cinema to see this film, he will instantly refund you. <laughs> That's one of them things that sounds nice, but I, I bet doesn't. Because what's, what's the guy walking around with shitloads of change? It does not happen. I know. Like, Clooney's a fucking So how many people just go, oh, I went to see it? And you went, oh, okay. Yes, you're about, you're about, you'd have been about six months old when this film came out. Anyway, well, how, it, okay, it, how old were we in 97? I was, I was 11. Three. I was seven. I was three. Adam was three. <laughs> see, I was 11, so technically, this kind of film at that point should have been made for me to go see it in the cinema, but I certainly mm. did not. Sure. You're the audience. Certainly did not. Anyway, let's, uh, let's do reviews. Adam, um, pick the order. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, I'm going to go first, and then I'm going to go Ben, and then I'm going to end up with Mr. Batman himself. Oh, Paul. I like that you called me Mr. Batman. So this is only the second time I've seen this film, and I don't remember too much from the first time. The bit that stands out most for me the first time was the bit with the rocket ship at the beginning, and then surfboarding out of space. <laughs> and that's what sticks with me, and that's what I remember this film by. And... To be honest, it's probably a very good way to sum up this film. If you had to show them one clip from this film, that would be a good one. But I actually still had fun watching this film again. It did had moments of just, it is so bad, it's good. The problem where it gets to a stage is it's not good enough or bad enough or good enough, whatever you want to call it, to last the runtime it is. If this film was about 90 minutes, I think it would be held... People would enjoy it more because you're just in there having fun. But knocking on just over two hours, it doesn't have the legs or the potential for that. Um, it's got I the love, wings. I love the cheesiness. I love the one-liners. Um, I actually really do enjoy this era of Batman because it's the kind of the era of Batman I remember kind of playing of like video games and stuff with this music. That I love that music that they play throughout that Batman theme song was like when you play like those old Lego Batman games or the Batman games. It was that kind of music that was played throughout it, and mm. I just it do love the cheesiness, the stupidity of everything. Like, and it's like everybody is aware of what they're involved in. I do believe to an extent. It's just a shame it didn't really transcend out of that. Um. Yes. Um, well, also, the only other thing I'll say is I didn't realise how bad the stunts were, and it reminded me a lot of the Power Rangers film we did when they were doing bandits <laughs> and stuff. I was in mind of the Power Rangers film while I was watching this as well. I was yeah. very much in mind of it. Um, yeah, over to you, Ben. 
Uh, well, I, I will I will set mine up by saying I believe this could play very very well as a double bill with the Super Mario Brothers movie um, in terms of like aesthetic silliness and all of that sort of thing. I think this is you miles could, ahead of that bed. Uh, in your opinion, sir, um, we'll uh, we'll, we'll see an, about that. At least has an era of production quality about it. Uh, now listen, there was production quality in Super Mario Brothers, and, and perhaps we'll get to that if we, if we, we do it should ever cover day, it. I'm sure. Perhaps yes. <laughs> Jumping on the back of what you said there, Adam, this was your generation of Batman films, but my gen was the uh, original two, the Keatons. So I, I've told Paul this before. My whenever I think of Batman, my heart is with the Keatons. Like I love Batman and Batman Returns are my fucking Batman films, and Keaton is my Batman, and I never liked batman forever because mainly because jim carrey always has irritated me with his brand of humor but val kilmer is a fucking charisma vacuum i've said it before on this podcast i'm sure but i cannot dig val kilmer so all of the flack that clooney gets here let me tell you he's no worse or better than kilmer him and kilmer on the on the level as far as i'm concerned the difference with this film over batman forever for me is that this film instantly you said it adam it knows what it is. Everyone who's in it, well, pretty much everyone that's in it knows what it is, which is a, a campy load of silly nonsense. They know they're not making a good Batman film here. They're just going for silly toy commercial style fucking filmmaking all the way through with puns and nonsense. And for that reason, it, it works completely because immediately you know, oh, right, they're not taking this seriously. They're doing close-ups of bat butts and cocks and biceps in tight cocks. leather from the off. Well, they're right up against his dick they as, he, as he's slipping on the suit. And it's like, oh, right, you're actually zooming in on, I don't know if it's meant to be Batman's bum or Robin's bum, but it's like, okay, if you're doing this immediately, then you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger coming out with all those one-liners in the first five minutes, blasting them into space and then fucking surfing through the sky, then absolutely I cannot watch this film and go, oh, well, that wasn't very, that wasn't very good. I have to go, okay, we're going to be, you, we're going to be silly, are we? All right, let's see how silly you can be. Impress me with your silliness. And you know what? It fucking did. I was entertained throughout. Uma Thurman and uh, Schwarzenegger absolutely steal the show. This is one of Schwarzenegger's fucking finest performances. I'm so glad this film exists just so we have the Mr. Freeze performance. It's wonderful. It's a joy. He Pang actually Alicia. does really well acting in this film. He does. I will give him that. And the whole thing is silly all the way through, and I enjoyed the silliness of it more than I enjoyed what Forever did, which was that middle that middle ground between Keaton's slash Tim Burton's Batman era of dark but with a little bit of playfulness to it slight playfulness to it and this one which is just silly camp nonsense forever sits in the middle and for that reason I can't enjoy it because it's not being really silly but good silly or serious enough for me to take seriously so this without giving a score away this out of those original four Batman films this is the third best it is by no means the travesty that people say it is there is so much fun to have. Batman slides down a fucking dinosaur <laughs> from head to tail. And there are absolutely, don't get me wrong, there are absolutely annoying things in it, mainly Robin. Uh, but, and there's a lot to be annoyed by. And I can imagine, before I hand over to Paul now, I could totally imagine how someone who is a big Batman slash DC fan could uh, really take against this because uh, you could be like, you're, you're absolutely destroying characters and ways of life and things that they, they should be and i get that so i could completely understand if you hate it but equally i wouldn't be surprised if on a rewatch paul you actually took more kindly to it. so let's see let's see so everyone should know i'm a big fan of batman i mean if you don't then you obviously hasn't not been listening to the podcast certainly but generally what i get most out of out of the here is that like most of his stories are dark detective stories which i love and that's not to say that the likes of adam west and lego batman and the more light-hearted side of uh, the cape crusader is not <coughs> appreciated because it is but the whole package of this film is just completely wrong for me and i get that they were edging towards a more 60s campy fun approach but it just all comes across as completely cheap for me one of my biggest qualms is the lack of the villains being comic accurate. 
Mr. Uh, Freeze, especially, would be such a great villain to actually adapt into a, a dark story because he is never the wise cracking, like punning, punning fool that he is. <laughs> He's a broken man who all he wants to do is save his wife at all costs, and like the duality of of right and wrong is something he has to face day to day. But not here. He's just, he's just a big joke in this film. And uh, Bane, Bane, he's a highly intelligent, tactical genius. We get kind of hints at this in uh, Dark Knight Rises. And he's also incredibly amped up on Venom, which makes him a, makes him super strong. He was just a silly sidekick who was just like the butt of, of jokes where he just wears random costumes <laughs> most of the time and grunting out small phrases. Poison Ivy, she's all right. She doesn't defend me too much and kind of does what she's supposed to do. I guess uh, George Clooney as Batman is terrible. He's absolute. He has absolutely no enthusiasm in this film, and he do, you can tell he doesn't even want to be there. And on top of that, he's he's like he's not even like the dark, mysterious, and broody man he should be, and is resorted to just like bat credit cards, which is like, <laughs> yeah. I mean that's <laughs> which yeah. is not Batman. <laughs> no. And then Robin, as you said, is just a whiny baby throughout the whole runtime, and he just kind of brings it down a little bit even further and Batgirl also just goes and betrays her uncle literally a minute after he <laughs> said not to look at some secret files <laughs> what a betrayal of a niece and on top of that she's not even supposed to be Alfred's niece but she's supposed to be Commissioner Gordon's daughter so that's another betrayal of a character Commissioner Gordon's not in this though is he he is in he it. is he's the fat man yeah. Oh, re- okay. He's not really stu- he's not really part of the show really just kind of a side character in these films yeah um Alfred. He's in all of them original four Batmans. He's the same commissioner, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Or I was thinking of Harvey Dent then. Do you remember Harvey Dent in the first film? Is a um, he's a black guy. It's a uh, what's his name? It's isn't a it? black guy. It's um thingy from Star Wars. It's Lando. What's, what's his name? I don't know his name. Billy something. Billy Billy D Williams. That's it. Yeah, and then they they recast him at night for Batman Forever. Um, Very racist. Yeah, very racist. Another reason I Batman mean... Forever is not a good film. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred is always beautiful, as always. He never fails in any film. He's always a beautiful man. And all of that, all of that just culminates in an absolutely dumb and poorly executed package for me. And that is that is just kind of it's just kind of fascinating. How you want to give it, it a score, don't you? You were about, yeah, he was about to give it a score. It I'm not. I'm not. It's just I think I feel like it is fascinating and it's enjoyable how bad it is it is enjoyable to an extent but it is for me the worst of the burton schumacher films okay i, I mean I, I can see how everyone see, would say i can't that. remember batman forever too well that was my film growing up i was watching that so in 97 i was probably watching batman forever mm. that was my batman film and yeah. that was the, like that was a, a film that grew up with me so that's why i have a, a lot of nostalgic love for it <laughs> but- it doesn't really bother me the, I mean, I don't think the characters are that disloyal in it. I would imagine I would want Two Faced to be a little bit more dark than he is, but and Two Faced, and <laughs> he yeah. is very much Two Faced in that film. Uh, but but yes, this film, it, 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 I didn't watch it when I was younger, and I, it hit me at a time when I actually liked Batman, and yeah, wasn't into it. I can I can get that entirely. I, I, I like I said to you boys on WhatsApp. I realised when I was watching this that actually I had never seen it in full. I had only really seen the Schwarzenegger freeze, Mister Freeze clips and bits. So I thought I'd seen it. Mm-hmm. So I was well prepared to think it was a piece of shit. But yeah. that's that's the it's, thing. It's not as bad as I. I honestly thought I was just. I looked. I watched it with all my mates, and I thought oh, it'd just be fun to sit there and watch it with them all. That is the perfect place to watch it. But. Yeah, like Ben said, Arnie's acting in this film actually isn't terrible. Arnie is doing Arnie perfectly here, but Arnie hasn't just rocked up for a paycheck. His Arnie's emotional like side, his emotional side of his character is not one you'd really see a lot either. I know there is that that moment at the end. I know Paul, obviously, you're saying in the comics there is a much more tragic element to him, but that was never going to be explored in this kind of film. No, but the, just because the, the fact that you got that glimpse towards the end with Batman was very interesting. Um, mm. I think ultimately, because immediately I clocked. See, this is I, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to turn this into a slagging off match for Batman Forever, but Batman Forever is silly and not a good movie for me. Whereas that's this, fine. I I understand. I it's I, this is the thing with this film as well. I understand if people like it. Yes, 
and I like it because just because it's not badly made. That's the thing. It's not badly made. Well, it had a budget of 160 million pounds. So, well, that that went on short stick and Clooney's salary, I would imagine. Mm. But yeah. the thing is, when you're watching the action and the ridiculous situations, it's like we, well, it's silly, but I'm enjoying that. I think what you said, Adam, is right though. You, 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 you hit the nail on the head. Two hours plus of that yeah. is too much. Ninety minutes yeah. of that would would actually be very bit, enjoyable. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel like it drags it drags in any places at all. It's got it's okay in the pacing. It's just like when you're looking at it and you're like, oh, there's still another hour and a half left of this ridiculous film. Yeah, you just end up tolerating it a bit, you know, before you get to the next bit that makes you go. Oh, mm. really? Are they really doing that? It's the action parts where Batman comes alive and he's out there fighting Mr. Freeze that saved this film. The actual parts around that are terrible. Like, there was that one part mm. where um, when his niece, Alfred's niece turns up and she goes, she's speaking to Robin. And she's Alicia. Like, Alf, I'm so I'm here because Alfred's Alfred's really ill. And yes. George Clooney's <laughs> listening in the background and he steps out of the room and he goes, yeah, Alfred's not ill, he's dying. It's yes. like, it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> wearing a bathrobe. He's always wearing a bathrobe in this. His is always black and Robin's is always like purple. Oh yeah, red. Robin is a little annoying little shit in this film as well. I think the, the, writing, the writing in this is not... Very, like, I can understand where they were going for it. Like, they were going for this light high campy feel. But the, the writing was not good at all. And they like, were the, trying to pitch Robin against Batman and like that ego maniac. Can anyone actually work with Batman? Oh, and just all the, all the bit with Poison Ivy it's just so cringe where it's just all they're, they're, go, they're fighting against each other because they want to be the one to get Poison Ivy I know that goes on so too cringe. long it's like there's too much just, man. and Robin just he's just being a whiny baby and then there's just elements of it like like the bit with with um, with Alfred where he's there's this whole big thing about him writing to his brother oh yeah and then that, it's just that like that is, only, that is only just so he can give something to to Barbara, so she can find out that the whole about the whole Batman and Batcave, and it's like, and then he doesn't. It's like he's like. Don't show anyone. This film, correct me if I'm wrong. He doesn't actually. He becomes well again, doesn't he? Yes, because because, because Freeze he's helps healed. Because yeah. they both have exactly the same thing. <laughs> what McGregor disease? Which yeah, McGregor's. Yeah, dude, we googled it yesterday. That's sloppy. And it's like, isn't it was? We think it's like it's it's believed to be a type of cancer. It's like. And then you look down and it goes, it's just like Batman wiki. They've made it up for the film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very vague. Well, they couldn't go full on cancer, I don't think, in this film. No. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Listen, uh, shall we talk through this film? I think yeah. there's yeah, so much crazy stuff that happens. I think it's worth doing. Yeah. So we get we get this whole initial start where with a the suit up, them getting in the car... Which I enjoyed. I enjoyed all of that spinning close-ups on ass cheeks and stuff. Immediately, you you know, okay, yeah, that's like you're slapping me around the face and going, "Are you are you paying attention to this?" And I'm like, "Okay, I am. Yeah, what are you going to do now?" <laughs> but at the same time, the lines. I just don't like the lines, and I don't think George Clooney can deliver the lines. No, he and can't. Robin is just annoying at delivering the lines. And by the way, like, listen. Uh, don't get me wrong. I was not saying that Clooney is a good Batman. He is a bad Batman. I was just saying that he's no worse than Kilmer. Mm. And what I don't like as well, right, is that people always go off about the bat nipples. The bat nipples appeared in Batman Forever. I don't mind a bat nipple. If you want to do I think it, they're I funny. If you I want to be no anatomically with... correct, go for it. Yeah, anatomically correct. I have no problem with the bat nipples. They're just funny. It's fine. I think this is why Robin doesn't work in this film, because Robin is supposed to be a child, right? But he is a grown-ass man in this film. Yeah, yeah, and he's coming it. along going, I want a car. Chicks dig Chicks a car. dig the car. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I know. shut up, you but grown man. Th this was a clear case of, we need to bring girls into the cinema as well. Chris O'Donnell's yeah. star was rising. Okay, we we need you. We you need to be did in he, this what film. What did he do after this? Did it kind fuck of all. His, did it kill his career? All. His star burnt out. I think he went into like a CSI kind of thing or something, didn't he? I think he's in like a procedural. Also, something the, or other. the Batmobile in this one is that used in Batman Forever as well? Uh, I think no. I, don't, I think it looks different. Because it looks. It has like shit. a neon exhaust. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it is. I think they, it's a new Batmobile from what from what I remember, uh, and then. 
Bat- Robin gets on the bike and Alfred says, I'd cancel the pizzas. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's like ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, there are ridiculous lines in here, of course. Um, <laughs> and then Alfred grimaces. Oh, I hate he, it. Terrible. He's been holding the pain in. <laughs> I know. It's so, and the thing is, like, Michael Goff, surely you are an actual proper actor. So why was that so poorly done? <laughs> I was like, what are you so upset about? At this point, At I didn't know. Like relax. I know. Uh, anyway, they get to see Mr. Freeze after that. There's the face-off with Mr. Freeze. Yes. With Batman yes. coming down, the dinosaur's back and tail, and lots of one-liners. Probably too many at once. That is, If mm. there is one criticism of Mr. Freeze overall, is that we didn't need almost every single line to be a pun. Yes. Yeah. And he ended up repeating so many as well. Like, There's only so many puns you can make of Freeze yeah, and Chill. I think he does all of them. All of the ones you could possibly think of he'd done in this film. <laughs> I was so <laughs> disappointed that you were not sending me to the cooler was said super early because I thought that was a big climactic. I thought that would have been said mm. as he was facing down Batman at the end when he walks to Batman. But that's the thing. You get a Batman, Mr. Freeze fight immediately rather mm. than saving it for us. You get it immediately. And it kind of like... Killed, it killed the momentum of them building to a big face-off. Some would say this is probably the, the better fight than the end fight. It kind of is really oh, quickly yes. yeah, I agree. Like, finished off in the final act. Like Poison Ivy gets killed off quickly and so did, I think so does Freeze Reed. He just gets punched off a ledge or something. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we get this one first and another stupid bit of writing, but I guess it's kind of works. Diamonds are his fuel. Because I guess people call them ice. <laughs> ice, yes, yeah. <laughs> Why would diamonds be his fuel? I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess that is it. They do call it ice. That's as <laughs> that's much it. as that's the writers didn't have to think beyond that. It's a very expensive <laughs> way of living. I know, very much. So. much and there are many crap one liners here, not just from Mister Freeze, but like Batman as well and shit. And it's just like, oh, it doesn't work from you guys. And this is this is this line when when uh, Batman first sees Freeze is where you can just see how much of a fuck George Cooney gives. He just goes, Hi, Freeze, I'm Batman. Oh, that yeah. is his introduction. <laughs> but how would you deliver that line, Paul? I don't know. What, <laughs> Hi, Freeze, I'm Batman. Yeah. That, that actual line. If that's the line, how can you line. deliver it well? It's the writing. It's the writing. Hi, Freeze, I'm Batman. Yeah, exactly. If it's fun, that'd be go. Jim Carrey doing it. But that's fun. It's the, th- w- this is nothing. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. This is how Michael Keaton would do it. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. Yeah, that, that works. That works. It's better. It's better. That works. With that little s- sort of snarl that uh, just, Keaton just does put, beneath the, just, the cowl. <laughs> just put some insinuation on some of the, the vowels or something yeah. in, this, in this sentence, please. I mean, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Clooney has uh, no charisma, as him. None. He's, None he's a vapid v- uh, void. But... You know, maybe that's why it, it helps make Freeze and Poison I- Ivy stand out so much. Because mm, if mm. Batman had much of a personality, I mean, let's be honest, Batman isn't really supposed to have much of a personality. What Batman would you put across in front of these guys? So, like, if you got Mister Freeze there, what Batman would you get to play opposite? Who's Batman? What, this like? Mister Freeze. Yeah, Adam West. Okay. Yeah. 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 This is his. This is his kind of film. This is his kind of comedy, and this yeah. is where it's spawned from. Well, so, so in many ways, like it, it's actually a great tribute to the old Adam West show as well. It's not like just oh, let's just be silly for the sake of it. In many ways, but, it's going back to the roots. It's the one of the biggest like injustice is George Clooney. Yeah, Adam West had so much enthusiasm yeah. for being Batman. He'd be like. I freeze. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's fun. I know, but but then okay, and that's it's, it's interesting you say that because immediately you're making me think of Jim Carrey, and if Jim Carrey was Batman in this film, it would be intolerable because that would be too stupid. So he's you not, almost need he's not Batman. <laughs> no, I know, but then maybe the reason why I quite enjoy this is because Clooney is so fucking straight, while everyone else is hamming it up everywhere. Maybe that's why it works more. Because if you've got a silly Batman rising to everyone else, mm. it makes it even more absurd and, and uh, ridiculous. This is this we might as well do everyone now. So this is this is the Christian Bale one. I freeze. I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah. Did Christian Bale start doing that um, the deep voice, or was that done before? 
he he's he's he was the one who he did pre- it the most like really adorned it yeah he put too much emphasis on it mm. to the point where people take the piss out of how he talks now mm. anyway we get to the end of this fight scene and arnold schwarzenegger says what killed the dinosaurs the ice age yes and he goes off he freezes some dinosaurs and goes off in an ice rocket <laughs> oh, up this- they go <laughs> this bit is just great, man. Adam's favourite bit. He fucking flicks the wings out as well, like a fucking monkey from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, he does look like a monkey from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, and he's got the goggles on as well. Yeah. See the goggles. The goggles is a trademark of Mister Freeze. He should have goggles on. He normally has some oh, red goggles. Well, there on. you go. Well, the uh, the, the agreement at the time would have been, I can't have goggles on all the time. I'm on a short sticker. Or the producers yes. would have said, we need to see Arnie's face. So of we course. can't have goggles on the whole time. Of course. I get it. And then the moment that Adam said they fucking skate or whatever you call it. Fucking surf. Surf through space. And they click their heels in order to get skates Yes, they do. Oh, it's very camp. That's Pile why I shit. like it. It's so camp. <laughs> where do those skate? Where do they even come from? They just click they like their come, heels together. They click they their heels together. They come directly out of their feet. I know. Right? I know. Where are the f- Where are their feet? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, mate. Listen, we can't apply logic to this. Um, it's a full-on camp fest. That's it and is. it's just like I, I love it for that reason. It's not it's not just a okay, this is a bad movie. It's like no, we're camped to the, um Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. You, that is a bad movie. Of this. A very poor version of this. It's, it's bad, but I also have nostalgia for that film. I know, so but this, nostalgia why, why goes uh, nostalgia goes a long way. It's the reason you're drunk why on nostalgia. Uh, you are I'm drunk, drunk nostalgia. on nostalgia. Yeah. It's the reason why Batman Forever is your favourite film because yes. the 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 Batman, it's the not, kind of Batman, it's not my favourite. No, no, out, no, out of them four, out of them four, eighty nine Batman is my favourite. Since when? I thought Batman Forever was always your no, favourite. No, I had Batman. a rewatch lately. I had a rewatch. The eighty nine is my favourite. Oh well, that makes Batman a lot Forever. more sense then. Yes, yes. I was going to say because that's much more the style of Batman that you like. Yes. Yeah, that is my favourite, and then it's Batman Forever. Not Batman Returns. He's third. Anyway, this was the point when they came surfing out of that rocket where I really did think this and Super Mario Brothers would work so well back to back. No, they won't. There's a different kettle of fish. Again, I mean, it's really not a different kettle of fish, mate. <laughs> They're both like, silly, stupid movies. You're complaining <laughs> about them, like, not Power Rangers are working. That's what, how I feel about yeah. Oh mate, come on! You got Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper. Power Rangers movies got who? No one, but they're still shit. It doesn't matter who's in it. It can have loads of names in it and still be shit. Well, why did gonna... you bring up the Power Rangers movie? Are you saying the Power Rangers movie is better than? Is that what? Adam no, we're said? saying they're, like, they're, they're up, all yeah. cut from the same cloth. Like, all oh, right, Mario, Power Rangers, and this. I would say. Yeah, I'd say so. The, I'd say so. Cut from Maybe, the same cloth. but this. The, the, uh, anyway, yeah, okay. It's it's stupid. It's silly fun. I very much basically these opening fifteen twenty minutes. I was like, this is going to be interesting because I'm gonna fucking love this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy you did. I'm very well. Happy you hang did. on. I said the opening fifteen twenty minutes. I think I'm going to love this. Yes. <laughs> they go off in a rocket. They uh, at some point Robin gets frozen and Batman gets out his little laser. Yeah, he he got a little laser that uh, melts him or something. Yes, <laughs> he's got you know he just got all the, he's got all the gadgets just like Adam West used to have. Stay cool, bird boy. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, listeners. Those who are hoping to hear from Arnie today, there is not, if you can believe it, a single Mister Freeze line in the soundboard. Do you reckon there's another soundboard elsewhere that it could possible. be just for Freeze? Yeah. Yeah. It could be. DC probably own the rights to it and they're probably all over that shit though, aren't they? Oh, there oh, is yeah. one. Dinosaurs! That's it. <laughs> uh... Who killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> and then, yes. So then, and then we're done with that. So that section ends. And they, do, they surf out the rocket and that's yes, the end. Yes, surf out the rocket. And then yes. we move over to the arrival of Poison Ivy. Pamela <laughs> Isley. Is that her name? Yes, Pamela Isley. Because it sounds like Poison Ivy. Yeah, yeah, I worked that out. Somehow, (laughs) Pamela. (laughs) And this is where I was like, during this whole thing, while she's in this lab, I can see this this mad scientist making 
what I assumed to be Bane. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why? Why is Bane in this though? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't Bane doesn't Bane need to have his own story? And then by the end, I was like, right, they really have no respect for Bane. <laughs> no, they don't. Which, it could which, be which more is, different to Tom Hardy's Bane. Yes, exactly. Which is why it's, it's funny because but he's still an a, 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 a companion, isn't he? Really, Bane. He yeah, serves the master. Oh yeah, it's true. Even in the Dark Knight Rises, he's a sidekick. Yeah. Yes. Which is which is why in um, the Harlequin anime Harlequin animated series they make a joke out of Bane just for being always a sidekick in every film, but he's not supposed to be the sidekick. Is he <laughs> he's not? Very, he's very capable on his own. He's he's probably he's probably got more smarts and um, like strategy than Freeze and I Pamela Isley put together. Mm. Mm. Can we just talk about the the actor who played Bane? I looked him up after this, and he died. I don't think this film before this film even came out. He oh, was a wrestler, he? wasn't he? I'm yeah, sure. he yeah. took too many steroids and had a heart attack. Well, he that's went why he was built like he was in this film. Do you know what? If uh, Alex from the Contrarians was on here now, I bet he would be able to tell you that dude's entire fucking backstory. backstory. <laughs> He'd be like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, Jeep he came on the scene in 1985. He did this. He did that." He yeah, well, I read thing. about him when he was filming this film. He couldn't really walk upstairs, and he couldn't even wash his own back in the shower. Because like his muscles were so big and his whole body was just Fuck, so... He couldn't man. wash his own back. Listen, let me tell you a trick, uh, everyone who struggles to wash their own back in the shower. Here's what you do. Uh, once the shower's turned on, you turn around. <laughs> That's it. It's what not much the... harder than that. What about when you put the soap on it? He wants to scrub it. A loofah. Let me yeah. tell you loofah. something. My back is not that filthy that I need to be soaping up my back. I really, I don't put soap on my back, my friends. Oh, soap right. goes everywhere but the back. Hot water on the back. Even though you could argue that your back is against uh, your chairs and stuff more than every other part of your body. So it doesn't breathe as much so it gets sweatier. Uh, you could argue that, yeah. Ben has the stinky back. That's what we've learned in this my back. episode. He's got no. a stinky back and a stinky crack. No, because I know how to wash my back in a shower if I can't reach it. Whereas you two, to... you two are like T-Rexes trying to reach your back in the shower. i got fucking long arms, mate. I can reach everywhere in my body. Oh, I know. You are, you are like the slender man. So let's, let's, let's move on here then. Uh, after, after that introduction of Bane, we then cut back to the fucking bat whatever, whatever, the Bruce Wayne mansion, and they're mm-hmm. all in their bathrobes there, which is just <laughs> madness. It is have madness. We, have we gone through the, the transformation of Poison Ivy, though? No, not yet. It's, okay. it, it hasn't happened yet, I don't think, okay, has it? Okay, that's fine. Or maybe I, it has. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, it's not yet. It's not yet. It's after this bit, because um, I wrote down here that while they're talking in their bathrobes, Alfred is off to the side clinging to statues for dear life. Oh, <laughs> Because he could belly that up. And I was thinking, what the fuck's going on with this dude here? Is he going to die in this film? I don't remember <laughs> Alfred fucking dying in a film. And then, and then it then it goes to Poison Ivy. Yes. he She um, angers her, her senior. And then he throws her through some, some chemicals and toxins. And then she just turns into this plant lady because she mixes with all the plants, mixes with the chemicals, and she is created into poison ivy. So mm-hmm. at this moment in time, pretty much everyone in this Schumacher, or, or sorry, Warner Brothers Batman universe, all the villains have been created with toxins because Joker goes into the toxins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penguin, I know he gets flushed down into the sewers, but he has all that black tar in his throat. Yeah, so he was just born that way, just wasn't he? sewage and shit. Yes, but neglect made him more of a monster. Oh yes, yes. Uh, Jim Carrey was electrocuted, but what? What? How did Harvey Dent get his fucked up face? Surely that's got to be toxins. Um, he got acid thrown on him. In yes, the right. So it was more. It triggered his split personality. But his uh, half face was purple and something rather than uh, the more gritty realized version. There is something to be said, right? Just to take a break here. There is something to be said about the playfulness of these films for actually sometimes being preferable to the Dark Knight trilogy. Mm. Because although it's very si- serious and, oh, this is what would happen if it was real life, like, it's fun to see these ones which are just absolutely outlandish. That's for what me, I hope uh, we get from the new one. I hope we get something completely different, like a different Batman. I hope it is more like the detective Batman, the silly I, side I of it, it and they be. lean into that rather than 
Because you can't recreate the Dark Knight. There's no even point in bloody trying. I see no. it as a lot more grounded. It's going to be like a smaller story than a big grand city-wide story. You see the way that these Batman films uh, treated superheroes. I, that is so much more preferable to me than anything that comes out of Marvel. Because I look at Marvel and I think childish, generic rubbish. I look at those original Batman films and children could watch them, even though some of them were rated 15. Like the original Batman was a 15, I'm, I'm pretty sure, or the second one was. But children could watch them and they could be considered childish because there's nothing too extreme that happens in them. But they feel like it's a, it's a different kind of fun it feels unexpected when you're watching it it doesn't feel like we're just going through the motions of we know what's going to happen here and here and here in these films there was a certain magic which is very lacking from the generic machine that just churns out the same old shit nowadays mm. very uninspired bland food in the cinematic diet for all you mcu fans out there <coughs> very bland you need a bit of 90s shoemaker need, spice we, when we record the batman next week spoilers that's what we're doing next week um, yes. I think Ben, every time he mentions DC and Marvel and gets on a little rampage about superhero films, uh, he should lose a point. But see, but, but, but I'll tell you something. <laughs> Here is something just to clarify, and Paul, Paul knows this, but maybe listeners don't. My beef is really not with superhero films. It's with the Marvel films, because there is nothing, uh, there is nothing f from me against the DC films. I like the, You just I like think the it's DC very films. safe. Not the not the DC films, no, no, no Marvel. Yeah, oh yeah, Marvel. Saying. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm I, I like to be surprised by the occasional Black Panther, but they are so few and far between that I would actually rather rather not have ever had Black Panther if if it meant not having any of those Marvel movies because I think the trade off isn't worth it. Um, there's just too much shit and it does too much damage to cinema generally overall, in my opinion, Mister Scorsese. Yes. I will always back you when you're when you're back in DC over Marvel, so I will not say anything. There you go. The only thing I don't back in the DC universe is Gal Gadot. That's fine. Yes. I understand. I get it. She can piss right off. Piss right off. Um, Where are we in this film? Yes. So Poison <laughs> Ivy, she rises. She Look, is created. She's looking she sexy. Kisses. She looks sexy. Yeah, she's sexy. Yeah, she is, isn't she? Do you know what I don't like about her costume? I don't find Uma Thurman ever sexy, but when she rises, she looks quite sexy. Mm. Sorry, sexy. say your bit, yes. I just don't like those little red tips on her fingers. The, the what? That? The what? She wears green gloves, and she's got, like, red tips, so they're like flowers. It's uh, not a very good look. Get rid of them. Yeah. That's just me not liking... It's not it's aesthetically pleasing to my eyes. That's fair enough. But she kills her boss or whoever it is, kisses him, it poisons him, he's dead. She wants to go and basically eradicate the earth of humans because she wants plants to thrive and come back. She's the hero of this story. Yes, yeah, she is. She's very progressive. She, yeah, she's, she's progressive. Greta Thunberg ahead of her time. Eco-friendly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she wants to replace it with evil plants. And then while she struts off, one of my favourite scenes of the film is Schwarzenegger in his ice palace and he's leading an orchestra of these frozen <laughs> people singing. And he's going, come on, sing, sing, come on. He's singing louder, dance. Louder, louder. He's They're always sitting there shivering. in the air. He's got a cigar. Schwarzenegger he's... absolutely would have said, I had to smoke a cigar in this scene. Absolutely. Because he, because he was Dutch at that point. Absolutely. And, um, <laughs> the, and like, you know, at this point, like, after you've just seen fucking Poison Ivy get up like that and now you're with Schwarzenegger in the scene, it's like, Schwarzenegger and Furman got the memo, man. They knew what this film was about. They understood yeah, they the assignment, as fucking people say nowadays. And uh, they were they were doing exactly what they needed to do. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. They knew, regardless of my my feelings towards the th how they dis displayed the characters yes. and the story of the characters, I agree. They knew exactly what they were doing, and they, they did it well. Oh, uh, most certainly. And then, speaking of sexy ladies, up turns another one. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara. Alicia. Alicia. Mm -hmm. Silverstone. Silverstone. The sister of... This, this, her mum is the sister of Alfred. There you go. Margaret. She's come from England, but she has an American accent for some reason. 
you know i've read something uh some tr- trivia yes that's that's a good point i did think that as well i was like oh that makes no sense um they apparently that alicia silverstone lots of scenes were cut because she put on a little too much weight uh to fit into the costume that they had designed for her mm. and i think fuck that man because she looks great she looks absolutely great in this they should have shown her in all her glory show show yeah. them goddamn curves man god damn yeah. you I, c- I can definitely feel that though because she it is definitely wasted she just basically comes to the final act and the final act is yeah. over in in the blink of an eye i could have done with more of her for sure mm. yeah definitely a lot more so she comes into the fold she's, she's in come there. because alfred is alfred is ill yes Alfred or uncle. He's not just ill, he's dying. Alfred's trying to get hold of his, his brother. You keep seeing him do audio messages. Yes. For some reason. <laughs> I what did you what do you reckon? Do you reckon like he was trying to get uh his brother to be the new butler? I have no idea. Like to be honest, I couldn't follow that uh thread. I'd totally forgotten about the fact that they, that we didn't actually meet that brother in the end. Because yeah. it felt like it was leading to that. But I don't know, maybe he was subliminally trying to get his niece in as the new bat girl like he wanted what? it but he didn't really know he wanted it but like go through this whole <laughs> mar- rigmarole of, of <laughs> oh <laughs> wait hang on i've got the next film okay imagine this an all-nighter you go in if you want to include power rangers that's the first one get it out of the way power mm-hmm. rangers then super mario brothers the movie then Batman and Robin, then Flintstones with John oh, Goodman, yeah. Rick Moranis. Oh, what a night that would be! That is one wild night. <laughs> I would pay for that night. Prince Charles Cinema, if you're listening, I agree. I would, I would be there. I think I'd be there. There's, so- there's something to to be said about watching this film and and films like Our Ticket to Hawaii. Yeah. And those kind of films, watching them with friends, it adds a, a whole yeah. another element to the stupidness of the film. Yes. I mean, I, I agree, but uh, I watched it alone and loved it. Well, that's fine. That is absolutely fine, and I can understand why. So, Babs, Barbara Gordon. Babs. Barbara Gordon? She's not Barbara Gordon. She's Barbara Pennyworth, maybe? She's not probably... I don't think she's, I don't think she's Pennyworth either. She's Barbara something. She escapes in the night, goes out in some leather. Oh, yes. She's, she's basically doing exactly what, she, what uh, Robin was doing in oh, Batman is this Oh, is this the motorbike scene? Yes, she still the motorbike. I hated this. Pointless waste of time. It's not, but this is the f- the first time she goes out. It's not the one where Robin follows her. Oh right, okay, fine. This is another time. Fine, fine, fine. But I agree, it is pointless. Yes, and it, it is. At least nothing. And they're hang- hanging off a cliff, yeah. and then they're like, very boring. Oh, and they have a little joke, and then they just get out of the situation somehow. Uh, question for you, Paul. And this yes. it doesn't relate just to this Batman film, but all of them, perhaps. Um, the black eye makeup that Batman wears. Yeah. What is the point? It it just adds a better look to the to the um mask costume. Yeah, so it's it, purely it looks... it's purely aesthetic. Yes, it's it's more pleasing to the eye. So it's yeah. not about it's not about him thinking that that conceals his identity more. No, it no, wouldn't no, look no, weird no. if it wasn't there. Yeah. Can I say that something? Is... If the cow is meant to hide your identity, there is this out of all the costumes, it's clearly George Clooney. Yeah, he probably had it in his contract that he needed to be more recognised. Yeah, it was very visible, I thought. But he has a very strong chin. Clooney does have yeah. a strong chin. So he should have... He did get voted sexiest man alive in this year. Well, exactly. Exactly. And it was all because of that zoom in on his leather ass when he was kicking up as Batman. He almost turned me. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Clooney, the real Clooney, we get, we get a, um, a scene at the... The, the the Gotham Observatory, I think we go to now. This is where Pamela arrives, and uh, a very she's, impressive she's, building, I must say. Yes, yeah. she's pretending to be a journalist or something, isn't she? Yeah. And uh, a geeky we have one. a what's what's her name? What's the um the uh that George Cooney is with in this film? Uh, El McPherson. Yeah. El McPherson, who just he's just there, just just to be there, just to be with George Clooney. But I see it as a direct relation to these these gorgeous women always being on Clooney's arm and he but he's never getting married to them. He is now. 
but that but that was a joke for a long yeah. time that he never get married and then they and they actually broach the subject and he goes marriage <laughs> marriage because <laughs> it gets like that is the joke on well, that's funny. Really on himself that's funny <laughs> But yeah, this uh, pa- uh, Pamela Isley comes in. She pretends to be a reporter, and this is where she's definitely coming out as being the hero of our of our generation. She's she's like, people are bad, and that plants <laughs> plants should rule the world. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, do you know what? That's what all the fucking vegans want. They want the humans to die so plants can live. Oh yes, plants Pull are the other friends, one. not food. <laughs> Pull the other one. Yeah. <laughs> all that monkey business. Speaking of monkey business, they then they don't they get in monkey suits and start fucking dancing around. Yeah, or is that's that later? A, that's uh, it's in a minute. We get we get a scene first with um with uh, oh they Mr. do the Freeze bidding, again. don't they? Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's at the for the rainforest or something, a costume ball. But we get Victor Freeze first, and he's watching home videos of his wife. Oh yeah, and nice. then he goes. And it, but and then someone comes and interrupts him. And so he's don't like, interrupt the I movie. I hate when people talk during the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> See that? That's clever because they clearly put that in so they could clip it and play it in all exactly. cinemas in the lead up exactly. to the film. Yeah, yeah. And he also finds out on the TV. I think he signs on the TV that uh, Bruce Wayne is auctioning off his diamonds. No, he takes the all newspaper of the man he throws. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's where he sees it. And but it's all a ruse from from uh, Mr. George Clooney himself just to get Mr. Freeze to come out of his cave and come and uh, fight him, basically. Mm. But I also like the line here that he says, which is very nice. Oh yeah, yeah I know, that's like begging it. That's <laughs> not even a proper joke now. You're just trying to get the depths of the middle of the words. Come on. Nice, very nice. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I mean, and I also do, I love Mr. Freeze, but I do think, who are you making these quips to all the time? I know. Like, he says, he says so many of the jokes when no one's even around or paying attention. <laughs> like, it's so, that's what you want him to do. So There's no fucker there, man. Who are you saying this to? He's a, he's a man who's just lost his wife and he's here just doing puns of ice. He's yeah. <laughs> like, come on, who are you, hey, man? He's, he's healing through humour, Paul. He's the most <laughs> divorced man in history. Oh, After man. After Lawrence Fox. Who, Mr. Freeze? Yeah. Why? How many wives did they say he had? No, Freeze. I mean, like, acting as the divorced man. Oh, right, I see. Yes. He's not divorced, though. Well, I don't know, whatever. He's well, half-widowed. Mr. Mr. Freeze, he's he's got a, a wife who's who's dying, so he froze her. Yes. True. What are he you talking about? Her. He got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was acting like that when he doing his own puns to himself and wanted to freeze okay. the world and... He's going through a midlife crisis, but yes. through puns. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. We move on to the costume ball. Money for the rainforest. Very good. And they turn up in the monkey suits. This is another suit that Bane's wearing. Just another costume. Yeah, I mean, just that's just, that is just stupid, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. can you imagine Bane, Tom Hardy's Bane underneath doing that? <laughs> i got to say, just a joke. if you know that Nolan created Bane the way that he did off the back of how Bane is in this, imagine what Nolan could have done with a Mr. Freeze type character. Absolutely. Could have been very scary. I saw an article the other day, actually, of um, Matt Reeves, and he's actually in the works of maybe doing a sequel to the Robert Pattinson one with Mr. Freeze. Oh, well, there you go. It's nice that they're not doing the Joker and all of that type of stuff. Yes, it is. I'm yeah. done with the Joker now. Let's have no yeah, more they Joker. Yeah, they to return to the Joker. It's fine. And this is also where we get what Adam said, the bidding on women. People love bidding on women, don't they? Yeah, especially in American films. It's very weird. It does mm. happen the other way. Normally, you see it in sitcoms. It's in an episode of a sitcom. But they do bid on men sometimes. It's just a whole backward situation. That I don't do. get it. Yeah, I know. It's like, let me buy... You. And it's always rich fucks. Like, tens now, of thousands of pounds. What are they doing? What, pounds. are they going to sleep with them or something? What is it? You get like a date, don't you? Or something yeah, like you have to go to dinner with me. Gross. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> That's the most I would spend. One pound. You want to go to dinner? One pound. Anything more than that? Fuck you. I you don't know have that 20 makes... quid, but you have to buy dinner. I don't know if that makes you better or worse than these rich men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine me in the back with my fucking tracksuit bottoms. And... You're worth a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> I'd buy you for a dollar, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Ivy um, blows her love dust all over the whole crowd, including Batman and Robin. That Everyone love dust is very silly. I know. 
very silly <laughs> stuff because the funny thing is like on set there was no dust so it was just like she's gonna p- blow something in your face and then three seconds later you just need to like swoon <laughs> You know, I love watching the extras. <laughs> <They're> so, <laughs> they overdo it so much. Of course. <laughs> uh, but doesn't it? And then, and then, Freeze crashes this party, right? What? But not before uh, George Clooney gets out his, his back credit card. Yeah. Because oh yeah. He also wants to purchase five million on the credit card. See, that's one of them jokes that doesn't quite fit. Like, that's too self-aware. Like, self-aware yeah. humour doesn't work in this. And did you know even the funnier thing? On the card, it says expiry date. Guess what it says? Uh, uh, before then. The date says, of the movie? Forever. <laughs> oh, well, very clever. <laughs> very clever. Do you reckon it's an accident outtake from Batman Forever and they just didn't put it in? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, yes. That's what the title, where the title came from, the credit card. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, in comes, in comes Freeze. He crashes into the cool party. Cool party, literally. he says. And he goes, everyone chill. I thought but it was cool love, party. He says that afterwards. Oh, but he right. goes, everyone chill. But then what I like about this bit is he goes, chill, chill, chill. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, Because he's, shooting, he's shooting at the same time. So he's telling like, them all to chill. We got the joke. <laughs> It quite if works. you didn't hear me, I said chill. It works with him. He needs to make sure, like I said, up to that point, he was just making jokes to himself. He needed to make sure everyone heard him. <laughs> this is what he's been dreaming of. Look, come on, man. All of this all of this is a million times better than the self-righteous, serious fucking bollocks that you get in Marvel shit now. <laughs> like that is, come on. I'm paying to see that if you put that in a cinema. It's definitely fun in a strange way, I agree. It's fun in the right way, sir. <laughs> you love silly fun. You should. This movie should be up your street. This is being fun with Batman. Oh, yes, that's true. Cro- <laughs> you cross the lines. Do that. Cross the streams. You're crossing a line. Yes. Uh, Poison Ivy tries to seduce Mr. Freeze, but it doesn't work. And he says, it's designed to heat a man's blood. I'm cold hearted. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. He's got a good defence mechanism there. Yes, yes. That's good. Very much. She's very interested, this this man now. She sees him as a god. Mm. And she wants him to join. She's like team. missing pieces of a puzzle, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Anyway, didn't they catch Freeze? Very yes. easily. After a long car chase. Where but, this is where Robin's just going above and beyond to be annoying. And he's trying to dis- disobey Batman in every way. That's and right. And he's being the child he, he's supposed to be, even though he's a grown adult. Yeah. Yeah. But they catch Freeze. They do. And he has that one of the great lines in this, which is actually from him, which is a little bit chilling. Well, I didn't even say, mean that as a joke. But <laughs> he says, he says, my name is Freeze. Learn it well, for it is the chilling sound of your doom. That's a good line. That's what he says to the, the prison officers, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. In prison. Then he beats them up. <laughs> yeah. But he, prison, but he they, can't live outside the cold zone. He's he got to can't. stay in the cold zone. It's a massive design flaw, if you ask me. You can't really take <laughs> over the world if you can only live in a cold zone. Well, what, 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 what do you mean? That's the prison he's in. He's in the cold zone. Yeah, I know, but that's like it's easy to capture. You take his suit off him and then just put one bit of air that's cold enough for him to live under. Yeah, that's true. That's why he's trying to make the into a nice world. Yeah, I do, I do like when they bring him to the prison, though, and he's in a fridge. Like Hannibal, <laughs> I didn't even clock that he was in a they fridge. Wheel him in, yeah, they, they wheel him, him in, in like fridge. Hannibal. And it's in a, he's in a fridge. See, this is this fridge. is all gold, man. This is wonderful. <laughs> this is wonderful stuff. <laughs> you couldn't make this up. What do people want? Come on. I know. I know. Uh, and then Poison Ivy and Bane are in some alleyway fighting for a bit. Neon lit, just arbitrary, pointless nonsense filler to scene get, they get their new base with some neon people or something yes. they seal it from them and Bruce yes. Wayne is having dinner with the supermodel in another pointless drab scene yes yes and then when the, then we get to the the bit that I thought you were talking about earlier Alicia Silverstone uh, sorry Barbara out for another motorbike race with Robin which is pointless and it's fucking Coolio yes What's, this? There. What's he doing under the bridge? This is nineties <laughs> to the max, man. He's running the running the race, isn't he, or something? Is he the guy he, running he, it? He's the one who's like action, or no? He shoots a flare. He doesn't. They're careful not to give him a gun because that might be too stereotypical. So they give him a flare gun, and that's what he pops off to start and he's the race. He's wearing flare jeans. 
Yeah, he nice, is wearing probably. big flare jeans. Probably. Coolio, and they've got man. weird gangs around here. There's like a Clockwork Orange gang. Oh, well. That oh, yeah, they me. did all of that, didn't they? Mm. And there was like the they, Lost Boys and all that kind of stuff, wasn't it? They're trying to make it a bit like Warriors. That's yeah. a bit of me, man. Mm. Um, and yeah, that, that race is just very, very pointless. Yeah, and they, they, it just goes nowhere. And they just hang off the edge and that is the... That is the end of the scene. I'm they glad the two didn't hook. I'm glad that she didn't hook up with any of them. I did worry when she first turned out. I was like, oh, God, don't get off with Batman. There's a big age gap. But um, I thought they were setting it up for her and Robin to have a little dalliance. Mm. It Unfortunately, the they comics. didn't. They, they do get together in the comics. Oh, well, the film's better than the comic then. Good. Okay. Good. Well, good. This, this film is not better than the comics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like that. Whim- there you go. A woman can exist in her own right in this film made in 1997 without needing to be a love interest. But as long as they get to do the uh, the shots of her bum. Mate, <laughs> mate, they open the film with shots of Clooney or Chris O'Donnell's bum. I know. It's all equality. I, that is what equality. you call equality, mate. Bum equality. Bum equality. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm, I'm falling in love with this film more and more the more we talk about it. There's more to like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. You have to enjoy it with other people. That's true. <laughs> It's true. Uh, and then, yes, then she, then there's a very uh, dour, downbeat scene with her talking to Alfred at home. And she says she hates the master-servant thing. And there, I'm there to, I'm here to save you from it. Mm, he doesn't want to be saved. He doesn't want to he be saved. He likes enjoying it. He, he, he does it. He's, he's, he's the father to, to Bruce Wayne, pretty much. Mm. It is true, though. He exists just to serve Bruce. He's the surrogate father. Mm. Poison Ivy goes and breaks Freeze out some reason they just let poison ivy in i think because she, she blows more dust in their yeah, face blows more dust in their face and uh gets him out uh gets his suit back there's a little shot inside the criminal property bit and it's all the old villains costumes yeah that's right very nice easter egg there fine yes um there's lots happens? of bright colors it's all bright colors and stuff like it feel it feels like uh I don't know. It is a very, it's a very nineties aesthetic throughout the whole film. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, and there's no, no offense, men, but com- co- comic books are inherently, by nature, the, the the stories that they're telling of superheroes are inherently outlandish because you're talking about human beings becoming superheroes, right? And the reason that all this aesthetic and 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 this style kind of works for it is because it leans into the outlandish nature of that. It's also it's also why the Burton one works uh, very well, and it's also why Nolan works because he he flipped all of that on its head and went actually well fuck it we're going to treat it very very seriously. I think the two extremes work when you try and do it middle of the road. That's that's where it doesn't work. Comics has very much evolved. They, I would say, this is very much uh, older comics would be this kind of campy yeah kind of way like the way this film is. But I feel like comics have evolved to be a more mature. Because it's because they've grown with the people who've been reading them. That's that's true. Yeah, yeah. And that is that is the that is when I got into comics when they've evolved they evolved into these more darker stories. Mm. Really. Yeah. That's my bag. Yes. Uh, and then we get into some sort of I don't even really know the detail of it, but Freeze is broken out and they're sort of running rampant, and Batman and Poison Ivy go head to head, which ends I think. And correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, in what I thought was a little homage to Bane breaking Batman's back. In what bit? Bane has Batman. He's got him from behind. Mm. But when, when Batman and Poison Ivy are going head-to-head at, at, this, at this point, yeah. Bane is holding Batman from behind. And he doesn't, he doesn't like do the Tom Hardy move, but he sort of pulls Batman back. And when he does, that something goes click, click, and... Clooney grimaces and the next thing Clooney's sort of like hanging onto the wall by himself I'd say that that is yes that is probably a homage to that yes but a, I don't remember it a very minor thing because I, I watched yes. it and I was like oh right is that going to be his back breaking yeah I don't even, that's how big an impact it made in the film I don't even remember <laughs> it happening <laughs> oh god is this the final fight uh, Batman and Robin f- uh, have a fight at this point don't they because he flips Robin into all the green gunk because they're yes. arguing over poison ivy yes. ivy oh yes yes yeah and meanwhile and they, Arnie's just the rubber fucking... lips bit in it oh no no it's after after that 
yeah, he puts the stupid rubber lips on. That was stupid. That was. Oh, that was the, yeah, that was the end fight. Are How would you even far? get lips like that? I mean, we're, I we're there. We're, we're at the point. We're at the point where um, Freeze is going to freeze the world because his because uh, Poison Ivy has said your wife died, and he's mm. oh yes, freaked. yeah, he pretended. She pretended that uh, Batman and Robin killed uh, Freeze's wife. Yes, but he didn't. and then he's he's distraught for about five seconds until she says that they will be the last two people on Earth, which means they would have to repopulate the Earth, presumably. Adam mm. and evil. Adam and evil. That's a good line. <laughs> yeah, you only like it because your name's in there. Yeah. I've also I've also wrote down this as well. When uh, it it looks like they're a little bit over Ivy now, and then <laughs> they both there's a little pause, and then he goes, "Great stems though," and the other says, "Buds too." Yeah, silly. <laughs> it's like, fuck's yeah, sake. that that's bad. See, the funnies never come out of their mouths. No, never. Terrible. There is Terrible. nothing funny that either of them say in this film. I will say that. Let's 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 get to the let's get to the conclusion because just like when watching the film, this is around about that time where it was like, okay, all of the good stuffs kind of happened. Let's get to it now. Let's yes, let's. yes. This is this is pretty much the final fight now because it Robin is being such a dick that we think, oh, they he's gonna go off and do his own thing now. But yeah. then he puts the rubber lips on. So stupid. So he, they were thin yeah. as anything. How's that going to protect from like lethal poison? <laughs> And then this whole fighting fight happens where oh we haven't even said about Batgirl. Well, no, she this found, is the point. Batgirl bursts in, right? But she's she found she found the thing from a uh, Alfred gave her the the little box under his pillow, conveniently to to right him. there. Yeah, she's supposed to give to Wilfred, and she immediately looks in it, even though he told her not to. And then all the lights come out, and it's like the Batman symbols in her face. I know, reflecting on her face, <laughs> that just doesn't happen. It, unless there was a projection booth inside yes. there. <laughs> and all the and on the computer, it's just like things like it's like a screensaver, like the Batman build is like <laughs> flying past the screen. Like that is how information comes through on a computer. Hey, it, it, it showed more Alicia Silverstone. I was happy. You're happy. That's fine. That's fine. And then yes, we're back to the main fight. Uh, it's the it's the it's the girl on girl action. Yes, Batgirl's but, there to beat Poison Ivy. And Batgirl uh, is uh, very progressive. She says you give women a bad name because your whole thing is uh, manipulating men. Absolutely. Anyway, yeah. she kicks she kicks her ass into a Venus flytrap. That's very quick. And he's, she's done. Even though she was sitting on that exact Venus flytrap the whole time, mm-hmm. this time when she goes in it, it kills her. Yes, good. Or it doesn't kill her, but it takes her out of action. <laughs> yes, it takes her out of the equation. Exactly. And then meanwhile, Arnie's still making ice puns somewhere. <laughs> he's, he's trying to freeze the world. They they they're manipulating the let kick some ice. around the world. This kicks some ice, and Batman's off there trying to beat him up. See this then- uh, this I will tell you is where the film. It's really failing because yeah, this, this is whole, ends, this it's just not good. Yeah, it's boring. It's mm. not. It's not done well at all. Hence why we can't actually remember what is happening. <laughs> the only yeah. thing I remember is his Bane's mask gets kicked off and he like turns into like a child or something. He shrinks. He yes. shrinks back into the the prison yeah. that he was before, mm. and he's all weak, rubbish, absolutely rubbish. He's never like that. He's supposed to be a built guy anyway. He just. He just amps him up with some. Venom. See, Adam, this you said that he was accurate. an actual wrestler. I thought it looked to me like someone wearing a suit because those muscles did not look real to me. Yeah, this they is the thing. So this is like that's how much steroids this guy had done. <laughs> oh fuck, that's bad, man. That is really bad. Yeah, his name was Jeep Swanson or something. Like that. Jeep Swanson. Just a moment of silence there for Jeep Swanson. Just, I thought you were Googling <laughs> him or something. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just looking at my notes to see where we are now. Well, free, let, let's just get to the point where they incapacitate Freeze. Yeah, because they the all have ice suits shit. now. Even though Batgirl just got a suit, she's now got another suit. What, you can't have, uh, you can't have too many suits? No, you can't. So it's fine. Um, yeah, they go after Freeze now, do they? Is this where they go after Freeze? <laughs> where they get Freeze. They get Freeze down on the ground. Yes, and they fix the computer, and Barbara fixed the computer because she's better at computers than Robin, which is true. She's a pretty much computer genius. Oh, there you go. They paid some attention. If you if you would remember from Killing Joke, when she gets shot, Ben. Oh, yeah, she's the one who's shot. 
and she turns into the oracle, which is basically like the man in the 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 man or woman in the seat who just does all the computer stuff. For does、Batman. she? I can't remember、yeah. that. Yeah. Wow.、Oh. Oh, that's that's a very sad end for Batgirl. But she comes back. She comes back in the comics. She just gets some, as they always do. They just, of she course, she comes back. That, that helps her walk. <laughs> um. So so,、uh, fr- when Freeze is down on the ground, Bat like he's he says to Batman because Batman's like you're going to you're going away, and Freeze like Kit says kill me just like you killed my wife.、Mm-hmm. But Batman shows Freeze the video. Says she's, she's not dead. She's alive. And you need to stay alive, yes. So we can find a cure for her, but also Alfred. Only because of Alfred, he would have let him die、yeah. if Alfred didn't have it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But、he、Batman has to save、him. a life, as you say. Batman doesn't kill people. He does not. So Freeze does a predator moment. He reaches into his arm and taps some buttons, and it releases some vials. Yes. It's the second Arnie film where it happens at the very end, where someone pulls <laughs> something out of their arm to change the game. And、what does say, he say? What does he say? Take two of these and call me in the morning. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they ended on a poor one, man. <laughs> and it just heals him instantly. It's fine. Yeah, she's fixed. <laughs> and then free. And then and then、um, before the final scene of the film, we cut to Poison Ivy in her cell, and Freeze is walking up to her. For his revenge, like what's he gonna do? It's almost like he's gonna, was he gonna rape her or something? Fuck's sake! Well, I don't know the way it's going. Drop the tone of the film. <laughs> well, I know. Maybe, maybe leave that out.、Um, he's walking to her, very intimidating. Gonna freeze her or something? I don't know. He's gonna freeze her, right? Yes, he's going to freeze her, freeze her, <laughs> and、uh, he says, "Winter has come at last." Mm. He should have said, "Winter is coming." That could have been a, a very dark ending with with Arnold Schwarzenegger beating the hell out of Uma Thurman. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> See, that kind of film is out there waiting to be made. Something like that. Oh yes. And then we say goodbye to the best characters in the whole film, as we join the worst characters in the whole film, as they run into the foreground. Yes, they're all partners,、motion. and they're going to need a bigger cave. They're gonna need a bigger cave. How、oh, do you feel about that? Oh, oh,、uh, it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but is it the most stupid thing the movie has done? I mean, it did a lot of stupid shit, but man, this is such. A, I got now that we're at the end. This is such a hard film to actually give a rating for because I feel it's almost like Philosopher Pasta, isn't it? Ah,、oh, mm. yeah, but yeah, ah,、oh, it's tr- this. The,、uh, I, It's going to be interesting. I'm not sure what my rating is. It's one of two, but let's interesting. Let's give our closing. I、uh, know. Well,、uh, you know, here we are. Are they、now. close together? Yeah, they are close together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Should we go, should we do ratings? Yeah. Unless、okay. you want to,、uh, do we want to say anything in summary for for this?、Uh, I think I've said my piece. I think I've said everything.、No. As you can probably tell, as what I said earlier, it's like it starts off fun. It starts off. So good, it's bad, but it does just drag on, doesn't it? I think, yeah. yeah, it kind of by our energy by the end of that, it's like we don't even know what's going on anymore. Yeah, we're yeah we've given up doing the podcast on it. The fun's over. It's not that funny anymore. No, <laughs> you're right. Get to the end. Yeah, it's true. It just it did really need to lose that half hour, and it could have been like a real fun film to throw on now and then. You know, I could imagine、mm-hmm. watching it quite a few times if it was like ninety minutes.、Mm-hmm. All right, go on、yeah. in, Adam.、Um, so、gonna, my rating of this film before was a five out of ten, and I did think about maybe if it was shorter, it could get a seven, but it's just a little bit too long, and、uh, it is staying at a five out of ten for me. Oh, well, I thought you were going to say six because you mentioned a fucking seven. No, <laughs> I feel like it could. That it's it is a, it does let it down by quite a bit. I think,、uh-huh. in my opinion, but yeah. All right.、Uh, well, I was so sure that it was going to be very, very low. It ain't high, boys.、Uh, I, it, it was riding a six throughout, and it hit a point where I was like, "Am I enjoying this so much that it actually could be classed as a good film?" But I'm well aware that it's not, and despite the enjoyment, it outstayed its welcome. 
and uh, it was fun talking about it with you boys, but I probably wouldn't watch it again like right now. So my score is a six. Oh, wow. Interesting. I thought you were going to drop it again. I thought you said... Yeah, outside yeah well, so you it's going to be <laughs> No, no, I was debating going up to seven, but I can't, oh, okay. in all good faith, go up to seven for it. Especially when you start comparing it to your other sevens. I know. Mm. It would never survive. It's, it's funny what this podcast does, because... <laughs> I I definitely enjoy a film so much more when I'm talking about it or it manipulates me to think oh this is actually quite mm-hmm. a good film right because of how much we're enjoying talking about it and how silly and maybe fun some of the moments are but I can't forget how I f- actually feel watching this film and for me it is a 4 out of 10 oh what oh, a shame okay. I, I did was expecting think- lower no, no, I thought he would go up, you know. I thought he would go into it with the sort as of As soon like, as you said at the beginning, he didn't agree with the adaptation with the characters and all of that. You can't really go high. George, it's, George Clooney and and uh, Chris O'Donnell are just so shit in this film and it takes it so much away from what it could have been. It, it could have if been great. If they had a good Batman, do you reckon you would give this man a yeah, lot more I think that, credit? Yeah, I think that is really Even what... though the adaptation of Mr. Freeze isn't what you want. Yeah, yeah. If I... I don't think that they're, they're, they're fun in this film. They're not fun they're enough not, to go with the film. Is Val Kilmer no. fun, though? No, but the, I don't feel like... The thing with uh, Forever, for me, is they, they the villains are more outlandish, right? Which I like. But, they, but, the, I, but the Bruce Wayne is still very reserved, very dark. He's, he's thinking about his parents, and it's more the Batman I know rather than just Clooney, who just, like reading lines and he's he's not bruce wayne like mm. a no bruce wayne right right yeah fair enough uh right so we have averaged the scores up and it gets a bang right in the middle five out of ten out of our combined scores it's a five out of ten which sadly listeners means it goes into the bottom of our table into the worst 10 films we had covered on this podcast where we're about to find out but one thing which is particularly in devastating the in the bottom 10 mm-hmm. one thing that's particularly oh, devastating no. for me is that that means power rangers no longer is and it's get got pushed out of the relegation zone i will absolutely definitively say that there is not wait so a this- sane human being in the world who think who could think that power rangers is a better film than so this power rangers is rated higher than this yeah can yeah. I change my score to a six? Does that? It's too does... late. You can do it at the end of the year. Can't do it now. <laughs> yeah, he's locked it. So we are going to place it. Well, is it better or worse than Three from Hell? I would say this is better than Three from Hell. Okay, from from memory, I would I would probably say that uh, this is better than Three from Hell. But I've actually rated Three from Hell higher. So unfortunately, yeah. Three from Hell's higher. Oh, well, well, I think this is better, and I think Ben does. So I think it moves yes. up, doesn't it? Fortunately, I think so yeah, as well. Yeah, so it does move up. So, listeners, good. the good thing is, well, let me give you the rundown of our new worst 10 films of all time. From worst to least worst. Worst, American Psycho 2. Second place, The Jesus Rolls. Third place, Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Fourth place, Tomb Raider. Fifth place, Beyond Reanimator. Sixth place, The Meg. Seventh place, Pacific Rim. Eighth place, Three from Hell. Ninth place, Batman and Robin, oh, which means it's so shame tenth it's down there. place is in time, and then Power Rangers escapes the relegation zone. We need to watch two more terrible films to push Batman and Robin out of that undeserved <laughs> lower <laughs> slot. Shocking, shocking, shocking stuff. It's not a good film, but it is not a bad film. This is it's just what happens bad. because we don't watch many really bad films. Here is case in point: Venom is four or five slots above this. Venom and is the absolute epitome of average, bland, middle-of-the-road And he gets a middle-of-the-road score. It's better than this. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's better because it's just bl- it's bland. Yeah. It's what you're used to. So it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. That, I, I know. I've seen that before, so this must be good. I give Venom a six. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I should have given this a fucking seven, shouldn't I? Or I should have given it a give ten, a really thrown a cat in among the pigeons. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Don't worry, I'll save you Batman and Robin come year end. 
<laughs> Look at me fishing to save a Batman film from obscurity. I don't, think, I don't think at the end of the year you'll be that bothered about it. <laughs> oh, I think I might. I might be. It's only good Arnie in it. It's that Power Rangers thing that smarts the most. There's no way. Yeah, Power Rangers really is an abomination. Well. There is no okay, way. Okay, well, because Scott gave it a nine. Scott gave it an eight, but yeah, that's really oh. skewed. But no, Paul gave it an eight as well. Yeah, two I've, I've on also I've also want to change my score of that as well. So well, I've, I've raised, end, of, I've, end of the year. Well, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna year, raise it, Paul. No, no, I'm, ch- I'm I'm bringing it down a bit. I was just swept up in the joy of with Scott on that day. You certainly <laughs> were. Um, all right, shall we? Uh, shall we go and listen to the the listeners and and see what they think of this film? Because there was yeah. a lot of opinions by all accounts. Yes, let's do that. Right, first of all, we have from our lovely friend Julio from the Contrarians. He said. Batman Forever did it better. Ah, <laughs> oh, Julio, you are very wrong, sir. You always won. I agree. <laughs> yes. Um, next up, we have Nerd Revert, and he says, although Clooney is probably my least favourite Batman, this movie is pure campy fun. Yeah, it is. Pure campy fun. I agree. Yeah, uh, I agree with that statement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, McDuck aka jamie russell says i won't be able to review this but i thought that i would share that i've seen each of the other films minus adam west and would consider myself a batman fan i was and i still am a huge arnie fan i avoided this film due to the hugely negative reviews slash general negative reactions he finishes by saying therefore this will be a first watch for me and i'm strangely looking forward to it Mm. Yes. I wonder how, what he will think. Well, I'm sure he'll love it as an Arnie film, maybe not as a Batman film. Exactly. Well, we shall see. Next, we have Scotty Redding. This is the guy who loves Power Rangers and was on the episode and gave Power Rangers an 8. Hopefully he comes on and gives this one a rating as well and helps it out. Well, he said... I know I should hate it, but I just can't. It's also a Batman film I can rewatch a lot. I don't know why. It shouldn't be fun, but it is. There you go. Lots I'm of people sure giving it love. Exactly. A lot of people do love it. No, I appreciate this. Rewind the movies, and they said not seen it for a long time, but remember it not being as bad as everyone makes out. People complain about Clooney's suit had nipples, but so did Kilmer's. Nipples, that's our lasting memories. Yes, I mean, Ben, Paul pointed that out, didn't you? That yes, it was also yes. in Kilmer's suit. I think it just Kilmer stands out more nipples. in this film because of how ridiculous the film is. Yeah, it's just it's just people just jumping on anything to hate the film, I think. Exactly. Mm. Uh, Santoka says, I have not seen this since its theatrical release, so again, a little rusty. The film feels more 60s Batman than a direct continuation of the Burton verse. A massive camp movie before I knew what campy was. Not 100% sure I do now. Looking forward to seeing what you make of it. Absolutely, it's campy. Everyone's saying it, and it is. It is it's ca- that camp humour. So it's not silly humour, it's that campy humour, and that works so much well. It's like, you know, do you know. Batman should be this. He's a man running around in spandex. You could imagine, on as a big fan of RuPaul's Drag Race as I am, I could imagine then doing a Batman week and like characters coming on and performing like <laughs> in this movie. It works a lot. That'll be fun. It's also, yeah, it's interesting. He makes a point, rather than a direct continuation of the Burton verse, this is the first one that Burton wasn't involved in because he was a producer on the previous one. On this one, he had no involvement at all. Mm. Do you reckon he turned up to set and went, now nah, I'm walking away from this and taking my name <laughs> yeah, off probably. It. The minute they said Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it, it was like, yeah, I'm the weird uh, gothy guy. I don't he do wanted Johnny uh, Depp Schwarzenegger. And they were like, no, we can't have Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> I want Johnny Depp with scissor hands. <laughs> Next, we have Right Stuff Movies. And they say, top tier ice puns and a masterclass in acting from Arnie. Definitely could have done without the whiny Robin and bat nipples, though. There's the bat nipples again. Yes. That nipple's very divisive. Yes. Mm. And good acting from Arnie, look. Yeah, man. We did say it. Yeah. We said it, yeah. A lot of time for this film. Next up, we have film floggers who didn't like it, and they said, I've seen better. I mean, well, we, I've seen better films seen than better. this, but... <laughs> We've seen better Batman Not in a negative this. way that they kind of connotate with that, I see. Yeah. I've seen worse. I've seen a hell of a lot worse. I've seen a hell of a lot worse for this podcast. Yeah. Uh, John Big Booty says I enjoyed it when I saw it in the theatre in 97 and I still enjoy it today Freeze was like a villain from the 60s TV show with all of his cold related puns and I don't think there was anything wrong with that I agree 100% next we have Pedro who says an abomination (laughs) I rewatched it two days ago don't do it it's still terrible one of the worst films ever made come on come on (laughs) 
<laughs> Don't be a sour Try watching puss. American Psycho 2. Exactly. And see how long you get Very there. true. Very true. Exactly. Next up, we have Conway Carl L, who is obviously a movie superhero fan. And they said, and they said, I like it way. I like it better than the two Keaton ones. I know at the time it was oh, very big with children. On. We need more lighter versions of Batman. Too much of the dark Vader type. We're assuming we should have light, dark, maybe medium to light coffees. F- something for everyone. Uh, Conway Carlyle, whatever point you started making, I disagreed with anyway. But then it descended into madness. What are you talking about? <laughs> With streaming, we should have light, dark, and maybe medium. With stream- light with streaming, coffee, we should have a, something for everyone. Streaming, we should have a Batman for everyone. Uh, Conway Kalel, you're wrong. You like it better than the two Keaton ones. You mad? Are you mad? <laughs> that is pretty crazy. <laughs> and you say we need more Ben's lighter versions down. of Batman. I don't, I don't oh. know about that. We got the Adam West. That stays in history. That's all we need. Uh. Heather Sachs says, I loved Clooney's Bruce Wayne. I also love this movie because I recognize what it is. Pure campy fun. There it is again. The the audience know. I'm here for this when I watch it. All of the actors appear to know exactly what kind of foolishness they are in. So I just hang on for the ride. Uh, agreed. This is this is the sentiment. That's no, the sentiment. No, no. You can't have love for Clooney's Bruce Wayne. No, not I don't that. agree not with that. that. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Next, we have Kevin Brackett, and he said, Clooney is Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Perfect casting. But that is no. true. That is true. Well, Clooney, is Clooney does live is. the Bruce Wayne lifestyle. <laughs> and finally, we have Epic Film Guides, and they just simply said, I love it. So I like the fact much. that the majority of those people actually really dug it. I mean, it says something. Yeah, there was more love than hate in that. Definitely. Yeah. And I guess as time goes on, people probably look more fondly on it because you know what you're getting yourself in for. Yeah. My heart is full having watched it. I, I Sometimes we watch films for this podcast and I'm like, once I've spoken to you boys about it, I won't be thinking about that again. But this, I'll, I will remember this one very fondly. And it goes to show that a film doesn't actually have to be top tier for it to have that effect. Mm. Mm. But it did have a very bad final act. Yeah, it did. It did. It did. Yeah. But I mean, there's so many. You know, do you know what? This film would make a perfect sticker book. You know, where you collect those different scenes, uh, stills from different uh, scenes and stuff. Like, oh, you could yeah. imagine. Yeah. You could just imagine them all from this. It would work very well. It is absolutely 90s. It feels very totally. fucking 90s. When we do that final roundup of 97 and we pick some of our like things from 97, I reckon it'll be. At least on my part, something from Batman in there. Wonderful. But that's and it. that's Batman and Robin. We did it, guys. Thanks, Adam, for bringing that up. I yeah, know. I'm you. glad it's got the love that it kind of deserves. Well done. But I'll tell you what is bad news, boys, is this year, 2022, already we've covered two films that have gone right into the bottom. Absolutely. That's, I think we're going to get more of this because we've got, we've got more of a target audience. Like, we're more of a target aim that and we can have more fun with it we can i would prefer not to watch shit films but yes (laughs) well what are we doing next time well we're continuing down this path of levity and bright neon lights and close-ups on bottoms and we're going to carry on george clooney's story and we are going to be covering the 2022 release the batman starring george clooney Imagine, imagine he was in it, and that was like the reveal at the end. Bruce, Warren Patterson only would, plays would Bruce Wayne, underwhelmed. and Clooney <laughs> plays Batman. Yeah, <laughs> this is I, this is so him when he was younger. <laughs> See, that is how you mark the impact of a Batman. If Keaton had a cameo in this, it'd be cool. If fucking Clooney was in it, it'd be like, oh, why did you bother? Well, wait for the Flash movie, and we'll see Keaton. Well, that's very exciting. I'm ex- incredibly excited to watch that film. When are you seeing it? So, I'm seeing it this Sunday. You're going Sunday. So I'm going the tenth. So you're seeing it. You're you're the one who's seeing it last. How how are you going to stay away from all the spoilers? I know. I, I was I wanted to book it this weekend, but it was my mum's birthday. And I wasn't sure what we're doing, so I didn't book oh. it across the weekend. Priorities. And then it turned out I could actually have gone probably most of the days. Mm. 
There you go. Uh, one thing I will say that is particularly disconcerting, and I only just realized it, and it was because of something Colby Mack said. Mm. And I looked at the poster, and I'm like, ugh. When you look at that Batman poster, the close-up one, mm. that mask is like suede slash leather. It is... It's not good. Mm. It makes well, me feel... Ugh. It's, it looks like a very, um, like, bodged together at home kind of costume. Yeah. Rather than, like, the manufactured, like, all the other costumes look. Cause it it, it looks so- like a gimp suit, yes. That's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> It made me feel <laughs> got a little sweaty face. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what we'll be covering next. Are you excited for that, Paul? Absolutely. You know it. We will then have covered three Batman films on this podcast. You can do One a little list afterwards. Full. Currently, Lego Batman sits top. Imagine if Lego Batman ended up sitting above the Batman. And it's also got a good rating as well, so there's there's a high chance it could do that. What, Lego Batman has it? Well, I gave it a nine. Paul gave it an oh, eight or a nine, didn't you? Mentalists. Gave it an eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was a seven from memory. Maybe a six, I can't remember. I think you so gave it miserable. a seven. Mm. Anyway, uh, good. Well, listeners, thanks for coming along on the 1997 journey. Couldn't be more different, the game and Batman and Robin. Let's see what the next film does. But first, Matt Reeves, the Batman. Yes, but before that, you might want to... S- Swindle on over. Is swindle? Can you swindle on over? You can swindle. Yeah. yeah, you could be swindling people all the way over. Oh, all the way over to our Patreon channel, where we're now going to be talking about our favourite comedies of two thousands. Amazing. Or the noughties, as Adam likes to call it. And that is a topic suggested by Nerd Revert. Absolutely. Yes. So head on over there, and if you don't, we'll be very unhappy. But we'll see you next time on the Batman episode. Yes. Yes. See you later. Ew, that's